Now in question 8, part A then, we're given this quadratic equation, 2qx squared plus qx minus 1 equals 0. And we're told that it has no real roots. Now, if it has no real roots, it means that the discriminant, I'll just remind you what that is all about. Remember, if you have a quadratic equation of the form, say, ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught, you'd normally try and solve this via the formula, which would be x equals minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. And it's the square root bit that controls the nature of the roots. And if this square root was a negative number, you would get an error on your calculator. If you square rooted a negative number, you'd most probably get syntax error or something like that. So this would lead to no roots. So the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, must be a negative number, must be less than zero in other words. So we'll put up here then that for no roots, okay, the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, must be less than zero. Now what is the b value? b is the coefficient of x, which will be plus q, so we would have therefore q squared. Then we have minus 4 times a times c. For the a value is the coefficient of x squared, which in this example is 2q. And the c value okay, is the constant on the end there, which is negative 1. And this must be less than 0. If we clean this up, we have q squared. And then minus 4 times 2q times negative 1 gives plus 8q and that is less than zero. And that's the expression that we had to show at the end of part A. Now in part B, we've just got to solve this quadratic inequality and get the range of values that Q would be. Well, when you solve a quadratic inequality, what we do is we factorise it, so factorising that would be q as a common factor, and we'd have q plus 8 is less than 0. Now don't fall into the trap of saying that q is less than 0 or q plus 8 is less than 0. What we need to do is find the critical values. And the critical values are the values of q that make this equal 0. So, for the critical values, we would have q equals 0, or q plus 8 would equal 0. Which leads on to, obviously, q still being equal to 0, or in this case, taking 8 from both sides of this equation, q would be minus 8. Now, what I do next is draw a sketch graph of let's just put the axis there, the sketch graph of y equals q bracket q plus 8. Or if you expanded this, the graph of y equals q squared plus 8q. Now, when we considered the critical values, we made this equal to 0, so that's when essentially y equals 0. And we found that y was equal to 0 when q was 0 or minus 8. And this axis here is my Q axis in this example. And so that would mean that this graph would cross the Q axis at 0 and at negative 8. And I'm going to assume that that's the point minus 8. And because this is a positive Q squared graph, you would get a graph that was U-shaped, like this. OK? Now, we're looking for where this quantity, q bracket q plus 8, is less than 0. Negative, in other words. So, in other words, where y is less than 0. And that's going to be below the q axis, this part here. So, in other words, we need 
values of Q between minus 8 and 0 that would return our Y value as being less than 0. So to sum up then we can see that from the graph okay, we would have that Q must lie between minus 8 and 0 and we would write that as Q lies between minus 8 and 0. And this would be the range of values of Q that we would need. And this brings us to the end then of question 8.